Honorable Sujiro Uratasan, Professor Emeritus of Waseda University, Distinguished Mr. Siro Armstrong, Director of East Asia Bureau of Economic Research, Australian National University, all panelists, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Australia National University for inviting me to join today's symposium that also providing keynote speech with a topic which is very, very important. Allow me to send my warmest regard and happy new year to all of you. I hope 2023 will bring a very good and better year for all of us amidst global uncertainty, which is now shadowing the global uh, environment. Today, today's symposium topic is very, very timely. How, in this case, we are going to address the issue toward comprehensive regional security in Asia. This is a very timely and interesting topic because at this very moment, mm -hmm. geopolitical situation and security concern is escalated, escalating in the region of Asia. And the timing is also very important, especially post-COVID-19 pandemic, which is not yet over and still actually providing or creating a scarring effect to many countries in Asia. At the same time, we also witnessing an escalation of geopolitical relationship that has already creating disruption on the supply side and also at the same time creating a complexity on how we should navigate on the one hand recovery of the economy and on the other hand creating also a peaceful environment so that this recovery can continue. So the question which is very important, how ASEAN, especially ASEAN, as a newly emerging region with a robust development, will and should respond to this kind of environment, complexity of the environment in which we have to continue navigate, continue our economic recovery, but at the same time, ensuring the security of the region and its nation can be continued secure without creating also more fragmentation and fraction. And how we are all as a country in this region promote the spirit of collaboration and partnership under the global framework, which is very, very dynamic. Ladies and gentlemen, the ASEAN regions enjoy a relatively peaceful and stable environment that is conducive to sustainable economic growth. ASEAN, in fact, is maybe the only area or region in the world that enjoy quite uninterrupted economic growth, and that bring a progress of prosperity for the people. ASEAN maintains proactive role as the primary driving force in the relations with our external partners that is also open, transparent, and inclusive. ASEAN, in this case, initiated many regional framework which trying to create a much bigger platform in order for us to be able to continue maintain peace and security in this region, ASEAN plus one. ASEAN Plus 3, ASEAN, ASEAN Regional Forum, and East Asia Summit, as well as ASEAN Defense Minister Meeting Plus, or ADMM Plus. This kind of platform in large, which is actually try to bring all the important player in the platform so that we are going to be able to create a forum for discussion as well as addressing many contentious issues, while at the same time maintaining and strengthening the spirit of cooperation. The diversity of ASEAN has brought security challenges for the region to face together, both in terms of traditional and non-traditional security threat. This is including natural disasters, terrorism, transnational crime, and now we also see more and more climate change that brought a lot of security as well as uh, consequences to the people and the prosperity of this region. To address such challenges, 
ASEAN requires not only strengthening our cooperation within ASEAN, but also jointly effort with our external partner. Hence, ASEAN is not only working among ourselves. That is necessary, but not sufficient. We have to make sure that regional peace and stability will also include all the very important player in the region of the ASEAN or even beyond. The initiation of the ASEAN Economic Community Blueprint 2025, which is aiming to create deeply integrated and highly cohesive ASEAN economy is one of the important start. Within ASEAN, this kind of cooperation and commitment to create a cohesive ASEAN economy will also provide a very strong platform for cooperation, not only within ASEAN, but also with the ASEA and even beyond. Especially at this current moment, after three years of the pandemic, which is not only creating a very deep scarring effect, but also at the same time, creating a new challenge of the geopolitical relationship. ASEAN Economic Community 2025 also create a dynamic and resilient ASEAN with this kind of vision, we are hoping that ASEAN will provide an able response and adjusting to the emerging challenges, especially not only within ASEAN, which is very diverse, but also beyond ASEAN, especially on the regional and global uh, challenges. This is not only what we call it the regular economic issue, but also security, or even in this case, health, food, energy security, natural disaster cooperation, as well as also the possibility of economic shock in the form of financial as well as non-financial shock. Ladies and gentlemen, this year Indonesia is honored to be a chair of ASEAN, which adopt the theme of ASEAN Matters at the Centrum of Truth. Under this theme, it is expected that the ASEAN will become a stable and peaceful region, as well as a region that will anchoring the global stability. This ambition is really built based on our experience, uh, which hold presidency of the G20 previous years, which actually creating a successful platform of cooperation of all G20 member countries amid a very, very challenging environment with the war in Ukraine. President Jokowi has stated that ASEAN is expected to become a fast-growing, inclusive, and sustainable economic region. This is, will be built based on spirit of mutual cooperation and also consistent uh, in the implementation of the ASEAN Charter. This kind of effort need to be nurtured, especially under the very fragmented global environment. As the global dynamic has been escalating in recent years and likely will continue in this period or decade, Indonesia 2023 ASEAN Chairmanship Priority Agenda align with the legacy of our Indonesia G20 Presidency in 2022 that is providing a very effective, credible platform of cooperation. A world of cooperation which is becoming more and more even needed when the force of fragmentation is becoming more and more a threat for our cooperation. ASEAN matters itself consists of three important elements, namely strengthening of ASEAN capacity and effectiveness which is very important and necessary forces for us to continue cooperate effectively. ASEAN unity is another very important theme and ASEAN centrality. With this kind of cooperation, we do hope that it will provide a break as well as at the same time bridge for cooperation, not only within ASEAN, but most importantly beyond ASEAN. As an epicentrum of growth, ASEAN will play a role as the central for regional and world economic cooperation and growth. 
There are four elements which is going to be the focus of our cooperation. Health, of course, with the legacy as well as the experience of pandemic is becoming one of the most important cooperation that need to be strengthened. Energy security, which is also at the same time providing the opportunity for the region to work closely, food security, and financial stability. Indonesia raises three priority issues in the economic sector, namely recovery and rebuilding, digital economy and sustainability, the implementation of which is translated into 16 priority economic deliverables for 2023. With our experience, as a G20 presidency in 2023, we are very confident that Indonesia's role in chairing the ASEAN in 2023 will also provide a very credible platform for cooperation, not only among the ASEAN member country, but also beyond. This is where ASEAN matters. This is how we are going to continue voicing the spirit of cooperation that is also at the same time providing a positive influence that shape global agenda in creating solution to global problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate that we have very many prominent speakers that is attending this symposium. I hope this is going to be a good opportunity for all of us to learn to listen, as well as to share views, knowledge, experiences, and also at the same time, addressing the concern, which is very important at this very moment, how we are all can work together to strengthen the safety, the security, and cooperation among countries and regional cooperation, and as well as the global cooperation. I do believe that this process is very important. Building common understanding, continue maintaining communication as well as cooperation. This is the most important ingredient for all of us to be able to strive and to continue our development, creating prosperity for all, and most importantly, creating a comprehensive, comprehensive regional cooperation and security. On behalf of the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Indonesia, I would like to express my sincere appreciation and warm welcome to all of you for the great effort as well as the spirit to continue opening, maintaining and strengthening cooperation and collaboration. I do hope that this will contribute to all of us to be able to resolve global issues and challenges. I wish you all a very lively, interesting, and productive discussion. Thank you, and have a good day.